Dragon's Dogma 2. If you haven't bought it yet, what are you waiting for? Everyone knows it, everyone plays it, everyone loves it. Just a few years ago, I'd have told you this isn't going to happen, but it's here. I'm playing it. It's Dragon's Dogma 2, against all odds. The original game from 2012 is a deeply weird, kind of janky experience that was begging for a more refined follow-up that never really materialized until now, almost 12 years later. Capcom could have easily taken the safer route and turned this into a medieval fantasy-themed Monster Hunter game, but instead they made a relentlessly faithful follow-up to the original that is nice. still a little weird and a little janky, but utterly enthralling. It is not a... I think the jank is what people love. The idea that you can just get flinged and rag uh, ragdolled over a mountain into a river and then something else happens to you is just beautiful in most people's eyes. Perfect game, but Dragon's Dogma 2 is one of the most intriguing and exciting AAA games I have played in a very long time. There are things about this game that some people are going to hate for sure. Uh, it's got some obtuse quests, some pretty oddball gameplay systems that go relatively unexplained. Uh, Listen, most things are well enough explained, unless you're Asmongold then everything's not explained and games too hard make it easier. But, for most people, especially for people who enjoy things like Dark Souls, Lost Ark, and hard games of that nature, Dragon's Dogma is definitely going to be something that they like. Especially if you want a more fantasy-esque approach to things. You know, be a magic archer. Be a guy who coats his dagger in his own feces and then blows up a kingdom. Okay, can't do that. But you get the point. Options, 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 and a little bit more fantasy, even though, you know, n n things like Dark Souls, Elden Ring, Lost Ark don't exactly lack in fantasy, but this is a more medieval-esque fantasy type of feeling. So if you're looking for it, this is your ticket. Uh, some inconsistent frame rate and extremely low-key opening hours. Inconsistent frame, r frame rate if you're a console peasant. Don't play on consoles, you're just gonna be constantly disappointed. Even the next generation games will run at best at 30 FPS because that's just the life you chose. Just, just stop. Consoles are not worth it if you're gonna game. But in a lot of ways, this is kind of the anti AAA. It zigs where most games zag. And while that may be disorienting for some out there, I'm gonna say I really like it. So what the hell even is this game? It's hard to explain if you haven't played the first one. If you have, it's like that. It's an action <laughs> RPG like that. where you make your character pick a class and explore a big open world. On the most basic level, it sounds indistinguishable from most high-profile action RPGs, but this game, it's really not exactly like anything else out there. Um, the combat's a little like Monster Hunter, where a lot of the beasts you take on are these gigantic nice. enemies that you can climb on target weak points, etc, etc, but instead of going it alone, or with a party of other players, Dragon's Dogma has you team up with three pawns. These are AI-controlled allies that have their own complex rules governing their behavior. There is no multiplayer in this game. Florence? My dude, no one's gonna call that Florence, okay? The fact that you call yourself pawns, well, not yourself, but the fact that you can call your pawns whatever you like, is going to be something else, okay? Everyone's going to get that uh, creepy uncle pawn. So if that's what you're looking for, you're not going to find it. Um, I would argue there's plenty of other things to look for, though. Uh, there's the quests, which tend to be very open-ended, uh, and the extremely systematic game world with day and night cycles and NPCs with schedules. It's sort of like Monster Hunter had a weird baby with Skyrim, but I, I don't know that that accurately Skyrim. captures how odd this game is. It's one of those things where you just have to play it or at least see it for a while to get what's really going on. Unlike the first game, which took way too long to get you into the open world, this one starts with a short prologue where you create your character using the game's, frankly, really impressive character creation tools, and then pretty well drops you into the game. Nice. If you so desire, you can totally ignore the main quest and start exploring in random directions. It's up to you. As an example of just how open this game can be, there's a quest where this soldier is escorting you back to the capital. In any other game, this would be some scripted thing where you're forced to follow this guy, but there's nothing stopping you from going off the beaten path and getting him killed by mistake. And if you fail the quest, there's no restarting. You just have to make your way to the capital on your own. Later on, there's a gate that keeps you from entering a southern section of the map. In any other game... You see, stuff like that is good. 
I like the idea that I need to protect the king, but suddenly a giant just comes in, swats the king away like a fly, and he's now a, a blood red mist on a mountainside. And then people are questioning me, hmm, what exactly happened here? And that's not changeable. I like that idea. And this would be locked by plot progression, but in Dragon's Dogma 2, there's other ways of getting past. There's just a level of freedom you rarely see in a game that is on this scale. There's multiple ways to resolve quests. You can access certain locations earlier than you're supposed to. You can kill plot critical characters and everything nice. just keeps going. The actual presentation on all this stuff isn't always that impressive, to be fair. Uh, there are a few full cutscenes, um, but your character is a classic mute RPG protagonist. Most of the dialogue is done through basic text, you know, the old text box technique. And uh, characters just standing somewhere, you know. It's functional, but pretty bare bones compared to the presentation in a lot of other modern RPGs. The game is just really unusual in that most of the main quests are pretty flat and simple. Go here and get that sort of things. Rarely does a main quest even directly force you into a fight. Most of the combat in this game is incidental to exploring rather than a driving force of the story. Um, it's not like Monster Hunter where every main quest is to hunt a new monster. It's more like you're going somewhere and there just so happens to be a monster. He's explaining this kind of poorly, in my opinion. Essentially, it's like this. You want to do something? Well, maybe someone asks you to do something. You go and do it. Maybe there's fighting. There's no fighting, but there's definitely going to be fighting on the way. And stuff can happen. Okay? There, there's no, there's no like, hey, this is what you do now. And that's good, in my opinion. Nice. I like it. It's enjoyable. They're in your way. Side quests can be a little more complex with multiple possible outcomes depending on what you decide to do. This game never gives you a Bethesda-style drop-down list of choices. The things you do are entirely up to you, and it's both liberating and potentially frustrating depending on exactly how you jive with it. For an example of what... You know why this is frustrating for some people? Because they play the good characters. They want to be the good guys. They want to save the world. I want to poison the well and then just take everything from the dead, they're called dead hands. So, situations like this are kind of frustrating if you want to be uh, the do good always type of heroic character. But situations like this are perfect. <laughs> if, you're a, if you're someone who doesn't exactly oblige by moral standards. And then it's good. But, you know. The idea is, it's kind of supposed to not be hard and always rewarding to be the good guy, to be the hero. So, you know, deal with it. I'll deal with the fact that I can fuck up and still get a reward. What I'm talking about, there's a quest called Hunt for the Jadeite Orb, where a guy had this orb stolen from I mean, he had an orb, and somebody took the orb. There's two guys who want it, and you can just find the orb and hand it over to either of them if you want. But if you really want to resolve the quest in the best way, you go to the local item forger and get a duplicate made of the orb. And you give the crappy one to the jerk and the real one to the nice guy, and you get a better reward. None of how this plays out is signposted or explained nice. other than the general quest area where these guys appear. Um, beyond that, it just leaves you up to figure this stuff out. And when you do, it feels awesome. I really like knowing that everybody is satisfied with their orb. Even though one of the orbs is clearly inferior, they don't know that. And I don't have to stick around to find out if anybody gets orb regret. I just move right on. The game does have a few systems to help you out, though, like the pawns, for example, who, depending on their experience, may be able to guide you during a certain quest. But that usually just boils down to taking you to a specific place, and, I mean, that's it. This can be extremely helpful during certain quests, don't get me wrong, but they're not going to explain any fine details of anything for you. There's also an oracle who's about equally as helpful, uh, and when I say that, what I mean is not that helpful. On the subject of pawns, yes, they're better than they were in the first game, and yes, they don't talk as much. They still talk too much and repeat certain lines a lot. Like, do you really need to point out that same ladder every time I pass by it? I don't yes. think you do. But overall, <laughs> again, they talk a lot less. And at Well, that's just the design of a game, sadly. I don't think that can be honestly avoided because, hey, you ignored the ladder one time, right? But you don't know if that's maybe a mistake. Maybe... You didn't hear the pawn say it. Maybe you didn't notice where the ladder was or something. So they kind of do need to repeat it. 
at more intelligently in battle. Pawns are what make combat in Dragon's Dogma feel unlike any other RPG. Because you're rolling with a team of three AI assistants that can only be given four vague commands like come here and help, which might make them sound kind of worthless, but if you built a solid team, they can practically win battles for you. You can obtain pawns from these rift stones, there's one main pawn you design yourself, and then you can bring along two guest pawns, which are the ones you obtain by using rift stones and spending in-game currency called rift crystals. Pawns on your own level are always free, uh, but higher level pawns cost more, and depending on your settings, the ones you see in the rift will either be pawns created by other players or pawns created by Capcom. There's a whole lot to talk about here with these things, how they work, what they do, but I'm going to give you the short version here and say that they work. They work really well, actually. And while you'll be swapping out guest pawns a lot because they can't gain experience in your world, finding new and better pawns is always satisfying. Another thing I appreciate is there's surprisingly not that much menu busy work in this game. There's basic crafting, but you're only making a few specific items. There's skills and different jobs to unlock, but those are only accessed at certain vendors. And while there's a lot of different armor and sets of weapons to find, there's no randomization on stats or anything. It's not a loot game. You're only getting so much stuff, and it's a big relief. So most Well, considering how much you have to explore and whatnot things to find, that's a good thing, honestly. Refi- <sighs> I never really liked the idea of free farming items too much in games like this if it was tedious, okay? Sometimes it's good, but most of the time, free farming, do you really want to do it? Do you? I mean, you're probably gonna get like a 70% level perfection thing and call it the day. Most people don't go f uh, further than that or 80%, you know? Your time, get this is spent doing the actual fun parts of an RPG, fighting monsters and exploring the world. There's a lot to explore in this game mm. too. The world map is very, very large. It's full of little secrets and tons of unique little things too. They clearly put a lot of effort into making this an enjoyable world just to be in. Um, it's dense without resorting to covering the map in Ubisoft style icons. So a lot of what you end up doing feels natural because you're the one who found it. You're not just marking objectives off a checklist. You're doing things because you want to do them. At least that's what I assume. Maybe there's something wrong with you. I don't know. But yeah. And there's tons of cool stuff to find. I haven't played a game that rewards your curiosity like this since Elden Ring. Like there's some really, really crazy stuff tucked away in the corners of this world. And yeah, while you're wandering around, you are going to deal with a pretty constant onslaught of enemies. Mostly some combination of wolves, goblins, bandits, harpies, with a random giant monster thrown. I mean, yeah, obviously. And by the way, yeah, I know from the uh, all the trailers and whatnot, it probably seems like you're constantly going to be attacked by uh, a billion ogres or something like that, giants or whatever. But obviously, no, right? You kind of should be reasonable and know that that's probably not what you should be expecting there, right? So, yeah, it's it's just going to be some easy stuff to not get you bored. And then there's going to be that bigger thing time to time that you come across because it's time, boys. It's time. Okay? A pretty simple system. I like it. Should be fun. On a good measure, like a Cyclops or a Griffin, uh, the world is just dense with enemies and ambushes, so it can get a little exhausting after a while. I'm not going to say it can't. It'd be a bigger issue if the combat wasn't so damn good, and, and make no mistake, it's very good. No matter whether you're playing as a warrior, an archer, a thief, a mage, or one of the more exotic hybrid classes, you're going to have a ton of tools to work with. Every class has a few basic attacks, but the many special moves you can unlock really change how your character works. As you rank up your class, you unlock flashier, more over-the-top abilities, and it really works well. One important thing to keep in mind is that if there's one thing this game isn't, it's Dark Souls. There's no dodge button by default and no lock on so how you end up nice. playing is pretty fundamentally different you can climb on top of monsters to stab them or grab their legs and push them over everything's fully affected by physics which can sometimes work out in your favor and sometimes really work against you battles can be chaotic and crazy the terrain you're fighting on can make a huge difference in battle as you explore and fight monsters your overall health slowly drains from scratch damage and the only way to heal it is to rest at an inn or make camp the addition of camping also makes Dragon's Dog, but to an obvious pick over the original, um, you're no longer forced to wander around in the pitch black night, and it doesn't just restore your health. 
without having to take a lengthy trip back to town for an inn. But you can easily get attacked while camping out at night, so you kind of probably should be better prepared for that at least a little bit. Uh, it does other stuff. You got the prerequisite cooking menu, only this time you're cooking real meat. It's such an odd but charming inclusion to make all the Ooh, cooking cutscenes full motion video. Like actual video footage of cooking of meat. It's Okay, what if this is not actually real meat, but this is AI generated? Because, I mean, generating something like this with AI, I think is possible at this point. So maybe this is not actually real meat. Another way this game is just doing its own thing. And there's a lot of combat uh, because there is a lot of wandering around. There's very few options for fast travel. Uh, there are ox carts, which can transport you between major cities. And it's a very rare, expensive stones that can be used to instantly teleport, but that's it. Which means you're going to be doing a lot of hiking, which would be worse, but the world is... Uh, it's honestly so beautiful to explore, and the combat is so enjoyable. Having to walk through certain parts multiple times doesn't quite have the sting it does in certain other games. This is a stunning game at times, too. The environments are incredibly detailed overall, and at any given yeah, moment, you'll be good. at a grand vista that's hard not to just stop and stare at for a while. I'm playing it on PS5, and while the visuals are excellent for the console, the frame rate isn't quite there. If you're on the wilderness, it mostly stays above 30, but in certain dense areas like the main city, the frame rate's going to tank. I wish the game had some kind of performance mode to make up for this, but it doesn't. If you want 60 frames per second, Dragon's Dogma 2. Ah, uh oh, well, that's just motion blood. That's your own fault for using motion blood. I, I absolutely... The first thing I do in every game I play is instantaneously turn on motion blood because I absolutely hate, hate it without question. It looks sad, it looks bad, and there's nothing you can do to convince me otherwise. It is what it is. Um, it's not going to be on console. That's, that's not happening. That's not how you're going to get it. you got to get it on PC. But I, I'll also say that the 30 frames per second didn't really bother me. It didn't hurt the experience of playing it. At the very least, the performance is a lot better than the original game on Xbox 360. Um, now that game... That was a chugger. As someone who's usually pretty sensitive about games that aren't 60 frames per second, this one really wasn't so bad. It, it might be that I, I've played the original a lot, and this feels a lot like the original, except for it doesn't crap out the way that the original did all the time. And, like, there's some games that target 30 frames per second that feel like they're in slow motion or underwater. Um, this game feels really responsive at that frame rate, so it's, it's pretty tolerable, at least to me. I haven't seen any bugs. Like, I don't love that frame rate, but man, not one bug so far. That's amazing for how complex this game is. I've definitely seen a lot of oddness, like certain enemies barely hanging off a ledge or NPCs yeah. shuffling into place or that awkwardly facing the wrong direction to talk during a quest or something. I mean, this is... You're going to have this sooner or later almost in any game where you see that something is stuck on a ledge sometimes because it thinks it can get over there, but it can't. Just because, well, it was never supposed to even be up here in the first place. This is something you will see in most games like this. It happens. There's no way to avoid it, in my opinion. Kind of funny, though, considering this is... No, this is rare, obviously. You're not gonna see it every two minutes like, you know, when Fallout 76 came out. <laughs> you literally couldn't play the game for even two minutes without encountering another bug that was blatantly a bug. Man, those were good times, boys. But that doesn't mean it's not working right. That's just a little bit of that jank. I kind of expected that. Bugs and jank are different things. And there were parts of the game where I thought maybe like a trigger was missing. Uh, maybe a real bug, but uh, uh, wrong. That was just me being dumb. I'm just so used to RPGs hand-holding you through quests uh, that when a game makes me figure it out, it feels wrong. Which I guess is kind of really sad, actually. But it's also, it makes me really happy that this game trusts me. I don't know. There's something about that that makes me like it more. Even though it, it might be a little bit more frustrating. What I the do hell? think that is What going the to... hell is this body type? What, what, what are we talking about it, here? What, what is this cat supposed to be? The... I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it's like someone put the wrong head on it by accident. Okay delete this might be a little bit more frustrating i do think that is going to cause some people not necessarily to jive with the game it does expect a lot out of you like i said i like that but not everybody is going to 
many things are, are, are they're not explained or just expect you to experiment to figure it out. And the actual main plot isn't super interesting, at least at first. It eventually goes to something <laughs> I like how he's like, yeah. And they, they keep they keep walking and, uh, and I'm like, oh, let's pretend we didn't hear that. And then they're like, ah, okay, okay, what happened? Places. But the first dozen or so hours, there's not a really large amount of attempt of getting you invested. It's one of those games that's so confident in what it is that it doesn't even try to rope in new players. And to me, that's just, it's so good. The lack of tutorials, the straightforward opening, the mar unmarked secrets, open-ended quests. It expects a lot from the player. The game journalists are going to be destroyed by this game, okay? We already uh, know how this is going to end. Game journalists are going to be like, I didn't get to the, to, to the tutorial. What tutorial exactly are you even talking about here in this case? Too much, right? Oh, it's going to be great. It trusts the player to be able to do those things. And if you're willing to go with it, there's a whole lot of fun to be had here. They did not dumb it down to capture a wider audience. It's a game that's unlike mm. almost every other open world game out there. And while there are some boring and awkward moments, it's overall a game that I would highly recommend to anybody who loved the original or wants an open world game that's a little less <laughs> formulaic than they normally. Hey, hey, Z, this is what I said. A giant monster throws you over a mountain. Well, this was in the mountain and you land in the river. This time, just the slime is also attacking you, because why not? <laughs> you see? Stuff like this makes games good. It's frustrating, and it is confusing at times, but it's the good kind of frustrating and confusing. The kind that keeps you coming back for more, because when you figure it out, you're like, thank you, Capcom, for letting me do it. I did it. Thank you. It's an excellent game overall uh but what the hell's going on with the uh generic fantasy music over the title screen what the hell is it's just generic you it's it's a title screen don't think about it okay anyway this is because it says that thanks for watching subscribe i have already dragon's dogma 2 good stuff boys it is what it is have a nice day bye bye